When Canadian filmmaker Rob Spence had an eye removed because of a childhood accident, he decided to replace it with a wireless camera. He's now working on his first documentary film using footage from that eye. Rob Spence is currently in Melbourne as part of the Other Film Festival, and he joins us now. Rob Spence, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. First of all, tell us about your childhood accident. How did, how did you lose the eye? I was in Ireland, my grandfather's farm. Uh, I was nine years old, and I decided that I should shoot a pile of cow crap with a 12-gauge shotgun. I thought it was a good idea. Thought about it. Yep, it's a good idea. Went out. Wasn't holding the gun properly. I think the shell popped back and uh, damaged the eye. Uh, so I didn't lose the eye at that point, but over the years it got worse, and about four and a half years ago I, I had it removed. You had a number of options available to you then. Why a wireless camera? Um, you know, it's when uh, whenever anybody loses an eye... You know, uh, in the modern uh, past, it's 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 almost usually you get off the phone with your doctor or, or somebody and said, "Yeah, I've got to get the eye out." You close the phone, and there's a small video camera there. And we've all seen the Six Million Dollar Man. We've we've watched Star Trek, this sort of thing. So if you add to that, you're a filmmaker as well as somebody losing an eye in the modern age. You know, it's 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 actually a very natural uh, idea. But how difficult was it to enact? And, and did you have to go and find the kind of people that you could work with and who would work with you yeah. in order to do this? First of all, maybe you should show us. Sure. Give us a look. If you just hold it there, I think we can possibly yeah. get, a, get a shot of that. Sorry, the hand's back shaking. Home. A bunch of Australians took me out last night. So. <laughs> <laughs> did they now? <laughs> well, <that's laughs> a nice did they show you a fine <laughs> Australian time? They did. They did. And so I was doing my best to hold her steady. But there you go. There well, there so it is. How, how's it work well it's um it's just a battery a video camera it's actually a colonoscopy camera so oh really it's okay. just the urge to yeah yeah you know. uh <laughs> and um a, a transmitter and a circuit board to make it all talk so this works the same way that um a wireless microphone does it sends an rf signal to a receiver once you have the video and a receiver then it's a video source can you look through it can you see through it? I can't. And in fact, Australia is, is a leader, world leader, in the other kind of bionic eye. But what they do to restore vision is they put a camera on a pair of glasses, and then they attach that one way or another to a chip on the retina. You get about 60 pixels of rudimentary black and white image. But for me, it's just a hole in my head and a place to put an experimental camera. So let me return to that other question about mm -hmm. that. how did you find the people who were willing and interested and enthusiastic about making this work for you? Well, I just made a lot of insane phone calls to uh, smart people. Um, you know, and you, you, there's a bit of a moment when you call somebody and say, yeah, I want to make a prosthetic eye with a video camera in it. And so there's a pause. And But one thing about engineers is they love pop culture and they love an engineering challenge. So I remember there's one guy at a battery company. He said, this is the most interesting phone call I've had in four years of working in the marketing <laughs> department at this battery company. I bet he did. And how can I help you? I think it's a great idea. And so I've really relied on the kindness of, of strangers but it's because I've never had a budget. I mean, there's the $6 million man. So far, I've been the $0 million man. It's all, it's but, all been uh, done gratis. Yeah. And in fact, uh, Time Magazine made us one of the best uh, inventions of the year last year. So that was good. So how often do you pull it out and wake it in? I mean, what, what, what do you film? I suppose more importantly, what don't you film? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Daily. Mm. Now, um, we... Uh, <laughs> you have to self-censor a fair bit. <laughs> we, uh, yeah, right now we're more in the, in the prototype stage, and it's 90% it's, it's there. So I'm mostly testing, or, testing it out, um, you know, maybe uh, having a conversation with my mother, who's very upset. You know, by this sometimes, and she's like, "Well, what?" You know, and so do, I'm just testing because what I'd like to do is is come out with a big splash, not just with the eye working, but with some really interesting content. And because uh, I'm very close to putting together the financing for a feature documentary, it's it's an amazing thing. Do you do you have a uh, just to please your mother? Say, you know, a, an eye for glass eye for Sunday best that you can wear out to see the relatives? It really upsets her. But you know, one of the one of the things that I have found, especially because I'm here at the other film festival. Mm -hmm. Is that which, is it, which is a festival um, for, uh, of films of and for made by people with disabilities. Exactly. It's Australia's only disability film festival. And one of the things that is, is coming out these days is it's, it's not, a, not only okay to be different, it's cool to be different. Mm. Like, I mean, even wearing an eye patch. I mean, am I vulnerable or am I a badass? We don't know. <laughs> but, I mean, it's like, it's actually, cool. my mother is like, can't you just wear an eye and try to look as normal as possible? She gets very upset. I'm like, no, Mom, I can't. It's like, I enjoy being a one-eyed dude. 
And the guys coming back from Iraq, uh, they're the ones behind uh, an expression called pimp my gimp, which is that, you know, if the, in the old days, you know, you come back from Korea, you wear long pants and a boot, you try to look as much as pot, you try to get through a dinner without anybody knowing mm -hmm. that you're missing a leg. But these guys, the young guys, they come out, black chrome, shocks, who knows what else that the Pentagon has, like, thrown some money into. And uh, they're proud of it. They're like, let's play soccer. I'm wearing shorts. This is my black chrome tricked out leg. Like, deal with it. Mm. And um, 